Well, good morning and welcome to worship. It's so good to see you gathered for worship, the worship of our God this day. If you are a guest with us, we do appreciate you taking your time to worship with us. We'd love to know a little bit about you, who you are. So if you would, please take just, the, just a moment and fill out the visitor's card located in your pew rack and put it in one of the offering plates as you leave. We would appreciate that very much. We are also very grateful for those of you who are joining us online on Facebook. We appreciate you taking your time to worship with us as well. Well, things look a little different from normal this morning. We have had uh, m many folks in our congregation develop COVID. Um, some have uh, been exposed to it, and so we will not have a choir today. We had 12 of our choir folks call this morning and say, due to COVID or other illnesses, they would not be here. We also have at least one other family in our church and one family that's very closely connected to our church have uh, been dealing with COVID. So we, for those of you who have people that you love in your life that have it and have been exposed to it, we are in prayer for you and prayer for them as well and praying for healing. In the meantime, service will look a little bit different today. Obviously, there's no choir behind me, so we ask you for your patience. Now, we are gathered today for the worship of God. Let's stand together and greet each other in the name of Christ in whatever way you feel comfortable. And this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I have a handful of announcements for us this morning, and per usual, it's 2022, but nothing changes. I, I'm going to run straight through them. I'll probably go through them fast. If you need me to repeat any following the service, I'd be glad to do so. Uh, the church office will be closed tomorrow for the New Year's holiday. Uh, which I think is timely for the snow that I believe it if I see it that comes tomorrow. So you either love snow or you hate snow, and I'm definitely one that loves snow. And I'm positive Pastor Lane is one that hates snow. So, <laughs> But speaking of snow, it's the perfect opportunity to remind you all of our inclement weather policy. Uh, if we have any cancellations or delays from our regularly scheduled programming, uh, we'll submit them to WRAL. We will post on our social media and we will call through the phone tree and email if that is possible. So just wanted to make a note of that so you all are aware. Uh, if you have not picked up your poinsettias, uh, if you have purchased one, they are out in the parlor. Uh, and so after the service, make sure you go out by the parlor uh, to pick those up. Um, we would love if you picked those up today. Uh, choir practice will meet Wednesday at 7 p.m. I believe it says in the bulletin that they will not meet but they will be meeting at 7 p.m. this Wednesday, so please make a note of that. Uh, the last announcement I have is we need some strong people to help us move the pulpit back after worship today. It shouldn't take us that long if we have a, a many hands to make a light work, uh, so we're going to put the pulpit back in the sanctuary as well as taking down the garland in the fellowship center. shouldn't take no time at all if we have a lot of people helping for that, uh, so please make note of that. Now let's turn our hearts to worship this morning with our moment of meditation. It's in the form of a responsive reading for us. Uh, you could follow along on the screens behind me. I'll be reading it in the fine print, and we'll be reading it in unison in the bold print. Light, 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 and more light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise men came from the east, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. The wonderful light of Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. to worship this morning is majesty hymn number 215 let's all stand as we sing
For our reading of scripture today, we have two passages we're going to go through. Uh, The first one is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and the second one is just a verse from Romans 13, 12. Uh, I'll be reading it out loud for us. You could follow along on the screens behind me or in the Bibles and the pew pockets in front of you. Beginning with Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judah, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead from them, of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Romans 13, verse 12. The night is nearly over, The day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, if I could have all the children come up for our children's time this morning. Good morning, Ainsley. How are you? Oh, okay. And we got Cayman joining us too. Look, Cayman's here. Hey, Cayman. You want to sit right there? I guess that works fine if that's what you want to do. All right, so how many of you got went somewhere for the holidays? Did you drive somewhere? Yeah. Did you ride in the car somewhere? Yeah. And you had a lot of adventures? Yeah, I went to the dinosaur hunt. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if we were planning on going to another city or another place, Um, Your parents, in this case, might ask somebody for directions on how to get there, right? And so if you ask for directions, you might get something very general, um, and you'll suggest the best roads to get there. But another thing that we can do is look at a map. We can look at a map on our phones. We could be, uh, as some would say, old-fashioned and pull a map out of our glove box and look at the roads to get there. But as we travel, we keep checking the map to be sure that we're headed in the right direction. And so if we follow the directions that we receive and we use a map to guide us, like Cayman is going right now, we will surely find the way. And so after Jesus was born, these wise men saw the star in the sky and they believed that announced the birth of a king. And so all of these wise men traveled to Jerusalem and they began to ask, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? Have you heard that story before, Ainsley? I think you have too. They said when they saw the star, they knew that that was who it was, and they came to worship him. And so Herod, who was the king at the time, heard about these magi, these wise men, and their search for the king, and he was very, very disturbed. He was very upset by what had happened. And so the priest told Herod that the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. And so Herod called for a private meeting with the wise man and told them to go to Bethlehem and look for this king, Jesus. And when you come back, come and tell me so that I could come worship him too. And so one of the things that these wise men did is they found Jesus 
and they bowed down and they worshiped Jesus. And so wise men, women, boys, girls, they're still searching for Jesus. There are people in our churches today who want to help us. There's teachers like Betty Jo for you, Ainsley, and Rachel who want to teach you and point you to Jesus. But there's no map to help us find Jesus, and there's no star for us to follow. But what we do have is the Bible that could help tell us who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And so this is something that we should study, we should hear our parents read it to us, and we could learn about who Jesus is and what he has done for us. You want to say a prayer about that this morning? Then we'll go to Children's Church, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we seek you today because we want to worship you and we want to crown you as our king. We are thankful for our pastors, for our Sunday school teachers who want to help us, and we are thankful for the Bible which we have been given to lead us to you. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 430, Sunshine in My Soul. Let's stand and put some sunshine in this gloomy day. Let's pray together. Holy Father, we have much to be grateful for at the beginning of this new year. For the year that has gone by, for all that is contained, and for all that we have come through, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that your peace and power have sustained us this far. Lord, we know that a changing of a calendar is an arbitrary thing. But it does give us a point where we can say, this day can be, begin anew for us. Our life can take a new direction here and now. 
So we praise you for that opportunity. And we ask you today to be with us. Lord, there are many among us who are ill, and we pray that they would recover and recover quickly. Some of our friends and loved ones are gravely ill, and we pray for their healing as well. We pray for the healing of every heart and every spirit and every relationship in this room. And we pray that your grace would be poured out on us in a way that transforms us and transforms our world. For we make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we enter into the message this morning, uh, I think it's an appropriate time to talk about where we are as a church and what we've come through and, and where we're going. 2021, for all that it was, was a very good year for Rosemary Baptist Church. I want you to think of what we together have accomplished. We have found ways to survive and thrive during a pandemic. That is no easy task. It has been a great challenge. But let's look at one way in specific that we have come through this together. Let's look at our finances. We have never been behind. Through your generous giving and the goodness of God and the frugality of our church staff, we have been okay. And more than okay, we have been doing very, very well. No programs had to be cut because of lack of funding. No staff members had to be laid off. No one received a pay cut. And that is simply because of what you did. You gave, and it was very good. We got the wild idea that the Lord was leading us to purchase a van. And we got the even crazier idea that we should start the fundraising for the van in the middle of a pandemic. And we received the money in a matter of weeks. It is remarkable. That van is probably about 20% of our annual budget. Meaning we gave over 120% of our budget when you consider the funds for the van. And the van is here, and we are already using it for the Lord's work. We've used it for uh, mission trips already, and one scheduled in the not-too-distant future. If you would like to go, please see Scott A. Man. We can always use more hands. We have given to children. We have given over 200 boxes to Samaritan's Purse. We blessed five orphans at our cottage that we partner with at the North Carolina Baptist Children's Home. All of this is because you are generous and God is good. And it is amazing. Our attendance has been good. Now, yes, I know COVID has broken through the sanctuary. You're used to seeing a crowd of 15 to 20 people behind me, and there's none today. I get it. I know there are a lot of, uh, in, in, let me, I would be remiss to mention that Will has had COVID as well. He's not with us today. And so today is a day, well, we've all expected a day to, like today to happen to our church. Well, it's finally here. But as a rule, our attendance has been very good. You have been faithful. Our church has actually grown during the pandemic. I can look right now at faces in front of me that were not part of our church community two years ago. This is good. We have been talking and, I, and, and thinking and living in a way where we're saying to ourselves, once we get past COVID, and I know that's natural and normal, but do you remember at the beginning of this thing, and they said, you know, two weeks to flatten the curve? It's been two years. And so I think it's time for us just to say, COVID might be with us for a while longer. I, there's no end in sight. And so we're just going to have to live. We don't need to pause our adventures or our programming. We don't need to pause what God is causing us to do. We need to act. We will be careful. 
We will take every precaution we feel that we need to take. But there's no sense in delaying anymore. COVID could be here a very long time. And so we are going to get back to the things that we said we wanted to do before COVID struck, with one addition. If you'll recall, the plan before COVID struck was this. We are going to create a cultural welcome at Rosemary Baptist Church. And we have done a lot of that. More work needs to be done, but we have done a lot of it. We need to create a culture where people who do not know our church feel very comfortable and welcomed in our presence, that they are greeted when they get out of their cars with a warm handshake and a smile. That when they come into our facility, they know where they can find anything and everything, and there's a helpful friend to show them away. We are to build the best children's and youth programs we can possibly build. And we do this for the sake of those who come behind us. It is our responsibility to teach the faith to the next generation. And so we are required to think of them with everything we do. And so we have work to do. Our youth program has been going very well. Our children's program needs your prayers and help. If that's nothing more than, hey, I know this kid who could benefit from a children's program, that would be good. If you say, I love children, I want the children's program to do well, but, you know, I don't have any of those gifts, that's fine. Would you commit to pray for the children's and youth program every day this year? It would make a world of difference. We said we were going to harness the power of social media. Now, social media became a bit of a... Um, a controversial thing in the light of uh, election seasons. I get that. But st people are still on it. People still communicate on it. And we are going to harness its power. All these we have talked about and we've made substantial progress on. So we are going to build on strengths from here. We have added something new. I believe in the power of small groups to teach the gospel to help us grow in Christ individually and as groups. And so small groups, I want to, it, them to become part of the fabric of Rosemary Baptist Church. We had our first session in the fall. Information about our second sessions will be coming in the coming weeks and begin late January, early February. At least three small groups will be available, and I'm looking forward to that. Again, it could be the case that you say, Lane, you know, small groups aren't my thing. Well, could you pray for it? Because there are lots of people that can learn and grow from this experience. So there will be places for you to plug in all over the place. And there will be places where you can't plug in, but you can pray. And so I'm asking for your commitment to do that. Your prayers are needed. Your participation is needed. I am very, very proud of the progress we've made and what we've accomplished. The things that have gotten us here will keep us here. But if we want to go further, we are going to need you. Your prayers, your participation, the use of your spiritual gifts and your talents. All of these things will carry us to where God has called us to be. We are the people of hope because we believe the gospel. Because we are Rosemary Baptist Church and we believe we have a mission. We share hope. And so I invite you to join me on that mission. Let's bow together. And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. I love the great promises of faith. I love what the Bible tells us we gain because we are followers of Christ. And unlike what you might hear on television, it's not a new Mercedes. It's something infinitely more valuable. Love, joy, 
peace, contentment. All these things are promised to you. They are your inheritance and your birthright as a believer in Christ Jesus. They belong to you. Have you ever noticed that many of us don't have those things? Have you? If you took a careful inventory of your own life, could you say that you had them? Have you ever wondered why, if you don't? There are things in our life that cause us to forfeit the gifts that God has given us. Christmas has been a wonderful event in the Wallace household. Abby is still quite not, sh- not quite sure about everything, but Ainsley is. And Ainsley thinks every present belongs to her. Every last one of them. No, 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 that present's for Mimi. No, that's my present. Then she goes. We, 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 we let that go a little bit because we do let her open every present because that helps. But she has the best time with it. Now, I want you to imagine looking at that little face and saying, yeah, you know what? You can't have those presents. Or, I want you to imagine looking at that little face and having that little face tell you, I don't want those presents. Well, it's it's nonsensical, isn't it? You can't imagine it. And I think that's very true of the spiritual life. Many of us do the unimaginable. We have these wonderful gifts and opportunities that we have been given by God, and we we don't get them. We are satisfied with lesser things. And we hold on to things that keep our hands so full that we can't have the gifts that God wants for us. Would you like to have spiritual power? Would you like to have the kind of spiritual power that gives you unflappable peace? That gives you contentment at all times and in all places? Would you like to have joy that is directly connected to God that could not be shaken no matter what? Would you like to be able to give God's love to other people In other words, when you meet a person, you are not primarily concerned about what they can do for you, but you are primarily concerned about what's the highest and best thing that can happen in their life at all times. Would you like that? If so, and you don't have it, you're going to have to put some things aside. Our text this morning is a wonderful text, and we quite often don't know how and when to read it. I am very sorry for what I am about to do. I am about to ruin your nativity set. There is virtually no way that the wise men showed up on the night that Jesus was born. Almost impossible. The wise men saw a star. Now granted, their their understanding of the solar system is much different from ours, much less precise. The term planet means wandering star. And so planets and stars were really for them the same kind of thing. It was just a celestial object. Some of them moved, some of them didn't. A planet was a wandering star. Perhaps you'll remember a few years ago around Christmas time when there was a conjunction, I believe it was between Saturn and Jupiter, and it was very, very, very bright in the sky. Chances are the wise men saw something like that. If you look at astronomical accounts, they're probably looking at a conjunction that took place in the constellation Sirius, like many of you used to have Sirius radio, or maybe still have Sirius radio, yeah, the dog star. They probably saw a constellation like that in the star, in the constellation Sirius, and they saw a conjunction, and they looked at the signs, and the signs pointed to the birth of a ruler of the Jews. Now, keep in mind who these wise men were. I'm sorry, I'm about to mess up another piece of Christmas. They were not kings. They were not we three kings. As a matter of fact, we don't know how many they were. We know there were at least two because they, the, the scriptures use the plural. It could have been two. It could have been 30. We know there were three gifts. They saw the star. 
where they were working, probably in Babylon, as uh, essentially wise men, astrologers for the king. And because a new king had been born to the people, they wanted to do the right thing. They were going to make a trip and pay homage to this king. And so they went. But being wise guys, they made a very curious decision. Herod was a scoundrel. He's known in history as Herod the Great, but he really should be known as Herod the Terrible. He killed all the way up, including family members. He held someone under the water till he drowned. When Herod was near his death, he sentenced many people to die, and they were to be killed at his death. And so Herod reasoned that if there would not be mourning at, for his death, there would be mourning at the time that he died. He was not a good man, and he, I don't think he was psychologically well. He was twisted and evil. Herod sent no announcement that the, uh, someone had been born in his court to be king of the Jews. Matter of fact, that was Herod's title, king of the Jews. But Herod didn't have it legitimately. Herod, Herod was half Jewish, half Idumean. He, he got it by treachery. And so when the wise men say, hey, here's someone born king of the Jews, Herod is terrified. Now, wouldn't somebody understand that? If there's been no announcement of a birth in Herod's home, and Herod is a horrible human being, well known all around the world to how, to how terrible he is, why would you go to Herod? The scriptures don't answer this question. All they, they say is the wise men went. Now, the wise men go to Herod. Herod finds out. He sends them to Bethlehem where Jesus was born. Jerusalem is about six miles from Bethlehem. So the action in this story must have happened very quickly. One reason we know that it's most likely that, that, Jesus, uh, that wise men weren't there for Jesus' birth is that Herod, when he discovers he's tricked, he has to eliminate the threat to his throne, and so he has all the baby boys two years and under killed. Another reason we know is because the scriptures in Matthew mention a house where the little child was. So, unlikely that this happened on the night that Jesus was born. Sometime later, the wise men come to Herod, they go to Jesus, and then they are warned in a dream. The evidence before their eyes was not enough for them for some reason. Herod's terrible reputation, his terrible actions, and someone being born somewhere of which Herod was not aware, who had a rightful claim to the throne, didn't terrify them enough. For some reason, they did not know they were playing with fire. And they were warned in a dream. Joseph also was warned in a dream to get out of there. It looks like to me that Joseph had made his home in Nazareth. He was called by the census to go to Bethlehem. He went to Bethlehem and intended to stay there because that was where the Messiah was to be from. Warned in a dream, he flees with Mary and Jesus for their very lives. Here is the reality that they had to awaken to. The king has come. Jesus has come into the world. He is the rightful king. He is here, as the Bible teaches us, to destroy the works of evil. Evil does not take that kindly. A new world is dawning, and evil, sensing its future destruction, will lash out, as Herod did and as evil still does. Have you ever wondered why your Christian life isn't easy?
evil lashes out. When you think you're going to make a new commitment to Christ, and when you decide that you are going to follow the calling of Christ in your life, whatever that calling is, say you're making a decision that this year I am going to follow the Lord more closely in, in prayer, or I'm going to make worship a priority, or I'm going to make giving a priority, I promise you when you do that, you will not get by that quickly. You will face opposition. That is the spiritual life. It would do us good to hear what Paul has to say about this. Put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. It's like Paul is saying in ancient words, wake up and smell the coffee. It is time. Now is the time. Far too frequently, we have lost urgency about spiritual matters. And it's really easy to understand why, and it's really easy to do. Perhaps you have had a student in your life. Perhaps, well, most of us who have had a grade schooler in our life at one time or another have had this happen. Hey, Mom, I need to get a protractor for my homework assignment. Oh, Okay, when is your homework assignment due? In the morning. Do you know what time it is? Yeah, it's, it's 9 o'clock. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. You waited till 9 o'clock the night before the assignment was due to tell me you needed a protractor to do the assignment. Yeah, that's what happened. When, when did you first hear this assignment was due? Last week. Parents who have had this situation happen to them, their hair gets set on fire because they know this could have been handled easily days ago, but not now. Now requires a trip to Walmart at, at night and you just want to take your child and, you know, shake them a little bit. College students are the same way. They have a paper, they get the assignment on the paper the first day of the semester and they wait till two hours before it's due to start. We adults can be the same way too, though. There's a great study that came out in the European Union about people registering to vote and people forgetting to register to vote. And they said, well, why didn't you register to vote? You've had all this time. Well, it was just never important enough for me to do. Too distant to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. The spiritual life sometimes seems too distant to worry about. Why worry about the nature of my spirit? I've got my whole life. I've got my whole life. So let's just... It'll happen. It won't. The things you do not start doing never get done. So if you think one day I'm going to make a commitment to follow Christ... No, you're not. It happens now, or chances are it never happens. Just this week, Molly and I were talking. There's a great website out there for people who are interested in Judaism. It's called askmoses.com, and it's got this little icon of Moses. He's about you know, this big, he's got a little staff and a beard. He's wearing a little satchel, and he's wearing blue jeans. It's, it's a great little thing. And I said, Molly, you know, I used to think it'd be great to have a similar website for Christians called AskSilas.com. And I have a little Silas instead of a little Moses, and, and articles on there about the faith. And if people had a question about the faith, they could email in and have somebody with some expertise answer their question. I think it'd be great. Molly said, why didn't you do that? And I said, I don't know. I thought about that six years ago. There's no website. There could be. I just haven't done it. If you're waiting for the right time, that is now. If you're waiting for a sign from God, this is it. But if you're waiting for someday, Someday doesn't happen. It doesn't. 
Today is the day. Now is the time. I know that those of you who are young have a hard time imagining this, but life is fast. March 1st, I will have been your pastor for 13 years. For me, that is a whisper. I can't imagine it's true, but it is. It's life. And if you don't start, if you don't start the life of faith, you will never get to where you want to be. What do you want your life of faith to look like? Do you want to have the kind of faith that empowers you, that strengthens you? The kind of faith that provides a sure anchor for your soul? Do you want to have the kind of faith that not only holds you up, but holds up those around you, those you love? Do you want to have the kind of connection with God that you understand His purposes in your life, His purposes in the world? If so, you have to make it a priority or it will not happen. The first priority in the spiritual life is always the same. Put away sin. Now sometimes when we talk about sin, it sounds like we're saying sin is a fun thing that we ought to get rid of because we've kind of grown out of it. Like staying up all late all night or not eating our vegetables. The Bible doesn't think of sin this way. It is direct disobedience to the command of God. It is knowing what God has to say and choosing to do something else willfully. The Bible talks about sin as rebellion. And it's important for us to put aside for a couple of reasons. One, public example. If you are a member or a participant with Rosemary Baptist Church, people understand who this church is by what they see in you. That's not always fair. You know, I'm very hesitant to put, like, sign of the fish or a Jesus bumper sticker on my car because I know how I drive. You know, the first time I cut off somebody in traffic, I mean, not that I ever really do that. They're going to be saying, look at a Jesus person cutting me off in traffic. You know, the first time I blazed by a state trooper three miles over the speed limit, or something like that, and I, they'll see that Jesus bumper sticker, you know. But just imagine you have a rosemary thing on you somewhere, that you are identified with Rosemary Baptist Church. And you live your life, but you don't put away the things of the flesh. People say, well, that's rosemary people. Not fair. Nope, I get it. That's what people do. The second reason we put it away is because it has corrupting power. No sin that we commit is just individual. Every sin affects the whole. I affect you, you affect me, we affect each other, we affect the world. Uh, a bad apple ruins the bunch. A little leaven leavens the meal, we might say. And so, we put it aside for the church's reputation. We put it aside for the church's progress. But we put it aside for ourselves. Sinful behavior is destructive. It hurts. Let it go. I encourage you to read the verses around the Romans passage we read in worship this morning. It has some specifics about sins we ought to let go of. And without going one by one, I'll mention a few. Although this is one is not specifically mentioned there in that passage, the whole of Romans speaks to it. The first one, let go of your pride. When we hear of pride, we think ego we think of the egomaniacs who think, oh, look at me, I am great, you should bow down and worship. Those people typically, yeah, they're, they're arrogant and snotty and they're a pain to be around. That's not exactly what we mean by pride. Pride is the systematic turning away from God. And it shows up in other places. 
We stop basing our lives on God, and we start basing our lives on ourselves, and then it turns into the way we treat others. The first sign of it is judgment. We judge because thinking is hard. But we also judge because if we've based our lives on self, we've got to put others down. And so we point out 14 things that are wrong with someone else and can't deal with ourselves. It shows up in other ways, in our unwillingness to learn. If we are unwilling to learn from someone else because of who they are or their station in life, we have an ego problem. It comes up in obsession with reputation, obsession with career, obsession with possessions. These things are pride. Let them go. Paul then mentions dissension, divisive actions. Understand this, the church is always a group of people. And people will always have differences of opinion. We Baptists are famous for this. There's an old story about Baptists. Anytime you see two Baptists, you'll find three opinions. We, we, that's who we are, and that's okay. We disagree about things great and small. It becomes dissension when we demand our own way, enforce our own way, and decide that we will not participate if we do not get our own way. Paul says, put that away. Then he mentions sexual sinfulness and substance abuse. I don't, for, before we talk about those for just a second, notice that he puts dissension, like that petty stuff, I don't like this, so I'm going to do this, along with stuff that we think is huge. They're all the same to him. And Paul says we are to be faithful to the Lord with our bodies. And then Paul says, don't live on drunkenness. And by that, that would cover all substance abuse. The numbers on substance abuse in our world are staggering. My first visit to prison here in Roanoke Rapids on Christmas, I asked the, the uh, warden of the prison, what are these men in here for? And this was before a changeover took place, and most of them that were there for DWI and drug-related offenses. What would it be like if every last one of us were committed to sobriety? committed to do what was right with our bodies, and committed to living without pride and without dissension. That's what we are called to. It's time for a new life. And so this year it is time to let go of sin. Let go of it, run away from it, drop it, do something with it that makes it repugnant to you. And when you do, you will gain strength, you will gain virtue, knowledge, and courage. You can have all the great treasures of the faith. You just have to put down lesser things. So I want to challenge you to do something. There is a great prayer that comes from the Proverbs that says, Reveal to me any wicked way within me. And I want you to, here at the beginning of this year, say, Lord, reveal to me the one thing I need to drop this year. Just, just don't try to work on 20 at a time. Lord, reveal to me the one thing. And he will. Sometimes he'll reveal it to you with a flash of insight, Maybe in a reading of scripture, maybe in a message, maybe in a song. But he will reveal it to you. And then ask for the power to let it go. And when you open your hands, you drop that thing you've been clinging to. You will find they are open to the blessings of God. So I challenge you. Set it aside. Let it go. Be filled with the Spirit and follow Christ. If you're willing to do this, this could be the great spiritual year of your life. 
But if you're waiting for tomorrow, if you're waiting for another day, if you're thinking someday, it's probably not going to happen. Today. Now. Let's pray together. Holy Father, we ask you to be with us. In truth, from time to time, we have all gotten complacent in our spiritual lives, and we have collected a wild variety of things that in our hearts and minds that we need to let go. So teach us to let go. We have heard the challenge to set aside the works of darkness and put on the light. Help us to do that. Help us to make a commitment today to follow you. For we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a good old word in the Bible. It's called repentance. And what that means is simply saying to the Lord, I know I've done wrong. I'm sorry I've done wrong. And I am committing to you to never do it again. We Baptists often make too much of the the sorrow of repentance rather than the joy. There is a great joy in letting go of sin because sin harms. And gospel and grace gives life. Set it aside and embrace the grace that God has poured out on you. Our invitation is open for anyone who needs a touch of their master's hand. Perhaps you need to know Jesus Christ for the first time. Today is the day. If you're waiting for the sign, this is the sign. Some of you need to make a commitment to this church. Today would be a good day to do that. Some of you need to commit to walking more closely with Christ this year. Today is the day. The invitation is Christ's, and the response is yours as we stand and sing 502, Open My Eyes. On behalf of Rosemary Baptist Church, I wish you all a very happy, prosperous, and healthy new year. And may all godly dreams in your life come true. And may this be the single best year of your spiritual journey. And I look forward to taking that journey with you. Let's bow now and receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Through Jesus we pray. Amen.